We see so much of everybody's best work every single day on social media and some days that can be really really inspiring but some days that can be totally demoralizing and make you just want to quit. <laughs> so I wanted to try to help you stay inspired and give you a few tips and tricks, some new tools under your belt that can help you get some crazy results. So in today's video we're going to be doing a little bit of advanced editing taking this photo from here to here in just three really easy steps that you can take with you to apply to any picture that you do from now on. So thanks so much for joining. Now let's get into it. Here is our starting point. So this is a three layer HDR photo that I merged and it looks fine, but as you see, it's just a little bit boring. There's a few distracting things in it. It doesn't really draw you in as a viewer to the focal point. It's kind of just plain. So the first thing we're gonna do is improve the composition by adding some gradient filters in Lightroom to create a little more contrast in the composition. So as a general strategy, it works really, really well to lead the viewer through your composition using light and dark. So you'll notice this in movies and anything that's cinematic in general. Typically, the foreground, whatever's closest to the camera is gonna be darker. And as you move through the composition further and further away, it's gonna get a little bit lighter. Something in the distance is gonna be a little bit lighter. Maybe there's like a window in the distance. Maybe there's the sky. And what that does is draws your eye starting at the most high contrast stuff in the foreground and then moves you through the picture. You can kind of wonder about the story. You can kind of notice new details and stuff like that. So that's kind of the approach that we're gonna go for on this. I know that it's a pretty basic example, but you'll see. So additionally, I wanna add a radial gradient onto this photo. Basically, we're just gonna draw a oval around the focal point and lower the exposure around the rest of it. So the radial gradient is a really subtle way to just automatically get the whole composition to look better. But you don't wanna go overboard with this. And next for this photo, I wanna use Lightroom's AI features and just auto select the sky and lower the exposure just a little bit. All right, I think that worked pretty well. I like how it made the sky a little bit more blue. So there's a little bit better color contrast with the orange tones in the house and then the bluer sky. Pretty cool. All right, so now it's looking a little bit better, but you'll notice these things popping up in the driveway are kind of distracting. So this next step is to use your clone stamp and your healing brush to clean up the photo just a little bit, get rid of little distracting dots and just whatever is in that composition that's distracting. Get rid of it, clean it up, simplify it just a little bit, and it's gonna make a huge difference on this. If you're doing something where you're documenting something and it needs to be exactly true to life, like maybe a real estate project, uh, you might not wanna take things out of the picture, so just a disclaimer. But this one, it doesn't really matter. We could have moved these out of the picture. It would have been fine. So we're gonna start out using the Spot Healing Brush and see what Lightroom can do on its own using its artificial intelligence to do some magic. So literally you just draw a line over each of these things where you want it to clean up the image. And most of the time it does a pretty good job. So I'm just going through and finding anything that really, really stands out that's distracting that we could have moved to clean up this image just a little bit. So I usually start with the spot healing tool and then I'll go back and do some fine adjusting with the clone stamp because you have total control over how that looks. So. Basically, you're just copy and pasting one spot over another spot and painting something out. Okay, and once again, for real estate stuff, I like to do this for anything that's distracting that we could have moved or that could have been staged in a way that it looked better. So I feel fine editing some of this stuff out. I'm not changing the structure of the house or anything that would be misleading for advertising, really. All right, so I think this is looking pretty good, but we can totally take this a step further, right? So this is probably one of those things that changed my photography the most is the dodge and burn tools. So literally all it does is you can dodge, which is lifting an area, so raising the exposure, or you can burn it to where you are burning, making it darker. 
So one way to look at this is it's literally the same as doing contouring. If you're into makeup, I'm not into makeup, but I know a little bit about it and it's the same concept. You're emphasizing stuff, you're building shape and contour to the highlights and shadows and the shapes in the image. Maybe lift some of the shadows if they're uneven, make it a little bit more visually appealing and simple to look at. And by doing just these subtle tweaks, we're really gonna make that image pop. I like to start out using a huge brush and doing some more global adjustments. And then I'll go in with a tiny brush and do some really fine detailed stuff. Like I'm gonna make these windows a little bit more glowy and I'm gonna emphasize some of the highlights on the trees and the grass and really just bring out some of the shape in these objects that was a little bit lost because of the super soft lighting scenario that we were in. And then I'll switch to the burn tool and start off with a big brush once again and do some big global adjustments. Just working on that composition some more. And my main goal is to darken the foreground a bit, making it a little bit more contrasty, add some leading lines towards the house, the main house, and lower the exposure on this garage just a bit to where the main house really stands out the most and the sky pops behind it just a little bit. So adding all this contrast is gonna inevitably boost your saturation a little bit. So I went in and desaturated it just a bit to where it looks a little bit more natural and neutral, which is more of my style. So here's a recap of all those layers. So we got one layer, unedited raw photo. We've got the HDR merged Lightroom edited photo. Then we cleaned up all the objects. Then we added dodging and burning. And as you can see, it made a huge difference. <laughs> All right, and that's it. So I'm gonna flatten this image and save it, and it's done. Um, I know this is a really pretty basic example. I didn't do any insane edits like sky replacement or uh, making it not look realistic, but that's kind of my style. You could go like a million layers deeper than this and go hardcore with your editing, but I just wanted to make this to show you some of the surface level stuff that you can do that makes a big difference and is pretty quick. So I hope this video was helpful for you and would love to hear any comments that you might have or questions about the process. Uh, if you've got anything else you'd like to see with some of these editing techniques, let me know. Maybe I'll make another style of photography behind the scenes edit uh, in the near future. But yeah, other than that, thanks so much for being here and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.